Buffalo is a city in western New York State that sits on the eastern shores of Lake Erie at the head of the Niagara River. Did you know that Buffalo is New York State's second most populous city after New York City? Buffalo also is home to Buffalo Central Terminal, which opened in 1929 to serve more than 200 trains and 10,000 passengers daily. The iconic Buffalo Central Terminal operated for 50 years until the Art Deco masterpiece officially closed as a train station in 1979. In 1997, the 18-acre Buffalo Central Terminal site was acquired by the nonprofit Central Terminal Restoration Corporation. Today, efforts are ongoing to refurbish and repurpose the property on Buffalo's east side and possibly even to revive it as the city's active train station. And it's haunted. Okay, we are in Buffalo, New York, visiting the old Buffalo Central Terminal, which is kind of cool because they're hosting a para-horror carnival because they say the place is haunted. So join us as we go inside and check this out for ourselves with our amazing investigative team, our psychics, our mediums, and of course the experts that are going to share there are tidbits of information on this amazing historical haunted terminal. Well, the central terminal was built in uh, 1927 and officially opened in June of 1929. And this was a very grand station for its time. The, the same architects who designed Grand Central Station in New York City designed this one. And the station really didn't get like a good head start because shortly after it opened, the stock market crashed. So we really, like it was kind of slow for a little bit. Then in the 40s, uh, World War II, this was the main place for soldiers to go off to war. And a lot of soldiers who came through here never came back. Right behind me in the concourse, there's a jewelry stand, and that jewelry stand sold more $10 engagement rings throughout the whole United States. And the soldiers, before leaving the war, would propose to their girl, promising them to leave for war, and they would never come back, unfortunately. So we have that. There's a lot of emotion here at the terminal. After, the, after World War II, the, the terminal started to decline. You had the railroads, you know, not really using that much. You had the automobile improving, you had the throughways improving, you had a lot of uh, airlines opening up. So then it started to shut down little by little. By the 1970s, it was about four trains a day. And then the terminal finally shut down in 1979. And then uh, an, a man named Anthony Fidelli bought the building for $75,000. And when he bought the building, it was in mint condition. He had parties here, dances here, events here. He actually made um, an apartment on the second floor. He was a bachelor, so he had like a little bachelor pad up there. And then he lost the building to taxes from the city of Buffalo. It was not his fault. Um, the city of Buffalo found out he was living here and they taxed him like crazy. So he was thrown out. In 1986, a man named Thomas Telesco bought the building for $100,000, did not actually pay for it. And he started stripping the building. He took out all the light fixtures, the clock, anything that was made of brass. A lot of our uh, light fixtures that were in the concourse behind me are in Hong Kong in a sushi bar. So he stripped the building for about a couple of years and then when he uh, finally got what he needed, he left town. 
So then the building was just wide open to the elements. People would come in, spray paint graffiti, you know, smash anything that was breakable. In 1997, the Central Terminal Restoration bought the building for only one dollar. Yes, one dollar. So ever since then, they've been committed to bring people back to the building. We've sealed it up from the elements. We have it alarmed. We have cameras. And we just want this place to be um, in, the, in the public eye again. We want people back in here again. So that's where we're at right now. It was actually at Parahor 2012. Me and my buddy, we were, we were looking over the floors, making sure no one was screwing around or get lost. A building of this size, it's very easy to get lost. So we're on the second floor where Tony Fidelli used to live. We walk all the way down the long hallway. We turn around and we happen to see a black shadow moving around the elevator lobby next to Tony's apartment. So we were very intrigued by us. We started walking a little closer to it and all of a sudden we hear someone behind us walking with us. And we get a little nervous about it. So we walk a little faster. Thing behind us starts walking a little faster. So I get to the middle of the floor, I shine my light into one of the rooms, and I see a black mass run in front of the flashlight. I freak out, he freaks out, we start running, the thing behind us starts running after us. So we run, we go to the stairwell, we lock the door, we heard a, a laugh behind it, we ran out of the building. That was actually the only time I was actually scared in this building. So folks, we are now going to turn it over to my paranormal investigators, joined by Jack Kenna. You know, that cool dude from various ghost shows. And we're gonna see what we come up with as Kendra leads this investigation to see, are there really haunted places or ghosts in this old building? Where do you want to go? We're gonna go, we're gonna follow Glenn. All right. Down here, there's been apparitions seen. I've seen them myself standing here in the doorway. And you see the apparitions cross the okay. hallway up here. So yeah, there's different tower slopes behind that wall. Well, these were the elevators. Yeah, so we were looking down on them last night, so don't fall. It's a very long hallway. And this is the area where I've seen apparitions go back and forth by standing in Fidelity's apartment there, you can catch them. And at one time I saw an apparition come out of the doorway taller than I am, stop and look, and then continue. Huh. Now we did see one down on the other side of the table last night, down towards the last doorway, kind of like doing this kind of thing. And we're seeing and who's coming down the hallway. Go back in. Yeah, yeah doing the peekaboo thing. You could see the arm. Is there someone the here who likes to uh, take care of this Those hallway? A dark figure. Yeah. Bathroom? No. So this is the control room. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Are you sure there's no bathroom up here? They're not allowed to use it right now. But is there one up here? Because the device said that. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's some. There had to have been. Well, Tony had his like shower yeah. and all that stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Back towards his apartment. And there's one up oh, by the water fountain the area too. Up oh, here. okay. All right. Yeah. So, so okay, that's that's significant for the, what she, it was said on the yeah. devices. We right. Were so here's a control room area where they control and be able to run the trains and where the trains would have to right. cut in and cut out. Yep. So yep. they didn't collide throughout. Is there anyone in here right now who can communicate with us? There's actually four of these rooms in total, so as we continue through, you'll see more of them as well. So there's four control rooms. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, there was a lot of trains, right? right? So, yeah. I just received the word fingers. Is the controller here? Do you have any trouble getting a hold of the, the brakeman and the conductors? My father worked in the railroad. He was a brakeman and conductor on the railroad. So you're having is trouble getting in touch with the, the brakemen and the conductors? Wow. So somebody's having trouble. It, yeah. maybe, it could be because the equipment's not working properly now. Interesting. So... Do you know the equipment is no longer working? Do they do or are they upset yeah. about it? Do you want it to be fixed? Well, it could be a very long time before they get the, the, the take chance to fix it. Are you still trying to control and watch the trains? I just received the word assault. 
assault. Almost maybe like it's an assault on their train station. Like how it's been... Do you mean an assault? If Stay in the red if you feel that the damage to the building is an assault. Do you feel the building's being assaulted? Torn apart, not taken care of. Well, there are, also a, lot of, there are also a lot of physical assaults here as well. Oh, because really? as the building was no longer a train terminal, no, what would happen is the homeless right. and poor would come in here and use this as shelter through the winters, through the summers, to try to you know, keep a roof over their head. And it would, I mean, it, we're playing King of the Hill here is yeah, what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I want your blanket. Right, right. How else do I get your blanket? Right, you assault them. Yeah, right, I want them. your pillow. Oh, you came in with a sandwich. Uh, yeah. Divided. Right. Yeah, I just received yeah. the word divided. divided. Right. Yeah, yeah. So all of this wow. would be a, divi a divisive group of people. Yeah. You can survive. You're giving us to, to use that analogy, however, yeah. like The Walking Dead. Yeah. You have the different groups, the different factions. Yeah. Then we're on that. Things to offer. Are you still hoping to? Do you like to try and still control the trains? Were you one of the homeless people that was here, and you were assaulted by someone? Trains, about the trains. You really like the trains. You're, you were one of the controllers. That's what they were. That's what their term was, yeah. a controller. Right? And they controlled the movements of the trains from these stations. And they so, used their fingers. And that would be a, the yeah, world. and it was a big job for these guys. And, you know, it's almost like the, in a way, like being an air traffic controller. Yeah. You know, but you're controlling the trains. So you got to make sure your train is on the right track. So Keep your eye on everything. Yeah, none of it works anymore. They took the job away. We're going to leave this room now. We're going to continue on. If you would like to follow us around, stay with us. I got these artifacts real quick. Though. Even though I asked them like to follow us. And, and wash pans and, well, even more recent ones, soda bottles. But stuff that working workman's gloves. So kind of battery. Some, yeah, some, yeah, old uh, uh, battery. It looks like a battery. Well, it was probably part of a communication system. From what I remember of my father working on the road, was that part of a communication system? Or the radios? Something along those lines? So, just interesting, I thought that the old bottle, it's like an old whiskey bottle or something. If the homeless were here. Wow. So all that trash, all that junk. I know where, where you're, you've, I've lost you a little connected bit. Connected to someone at some point. But I'd really like to see a little bit more from you. Well, maybe I'm, we'll see more as we go down. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's go downstairs. Let's I know going. you're tired up here. Maybe we can, you can relax. We'll let you be for now. Yeah. Now, as we're walking, I'm going to tell a quick story. So one night, it was Halloween time, they were doing the ghost tours through here. And what they did was they said, let's have some fun and put the psychic medium on a floor all by himself and talk to each tour as they come through. So I actually stood here in Fidelity's apartment, and what I did was I paced back and forth, walking through the apartment mm -hmm. and walking through this main room here. And what happened was, all of a sudden, I'd start to hear these footsteps directly behind me. So I'd stop, and I'd hear, boom, boom. Like they didn't expect me to stop. And then I'd start back up, and I'd stop, and you'd hear stopping right behind me. I had a woman following me, circling me, as I paced in that room. Oh. That's interesting, because they're not wooden floors. Right. So it's not... And you could hear the footsteps on the concrete. Concrete. Yeah. Right. But so you it's could hear like... the, the footsteps on the concrete, or on the, uh, on the carpet as right. you walked, like right. a shuffle type uh, and, and that's, yeah, yeah, that's kind of my point, because it wasn't you walking and then the boards were right. settling after. Right. It's concrete. It doesn't reset. <laughs> that, that's really interesting that you made told us that story because there has also been other people who have had that experience of the foot, the footsteps following them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he was telling. Yeah, we were talking about that last night. That, so it's really interesting that you know multiple people are having the exact same Thanks. experiences happen. Yeah, it's a sort of a kind of validation. Yeah.
Last, last night we had some activity down here too. I saw something, like if you look down the doorway there, I saw something cross on the floor, towards the floor, about yay high or so, just like a mist type thing move across the bottom of the doorway. Way down the grand doorway. So it went from, all right, that was just interesting. I said, yeah. It's not even. Well, I saw you talking about, you know, it was going to move left, uh, moved from left to right down that doorway, and I got a couple peeps on this. And I've been standing here, there's nothing. Excuse me a moment. Do you like There it is again. Is there something there? Mm. Like it's metal, but you're st still going up. Is it wire? No, but mine is doing the exact same thing. House. Are we talking to someone that this is their house? Is it wire? Mm -hmm. Or is it just this metal closet? I don't know. Is it does it do the same on it? It could be the metal. Okay, hey, hey, hey. It could be grounded. Look at the K2. Yeah, but it's steady. So I have a feeling there's a wire that's grounded off to this. In other words, one of these wires is touching this metal and causing it to have yeah, a, uh, it is. a pulse through it. So you can tell, so this, you can tell, well. Well, it's not. Yeah, it's not stopping anymore, though. Can we direction? That's interesting. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah, it is all the way down there, isn't it? Well, are you making the lights go off? I've never seen that. <laughs> Two words. Yeah. yeah. Are you cold? Maybe it's cold. Maybe it's cold. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It makes a lot of sense with cold baby due to the people that it, who have actually frozen to death in this location mm -hmm. as well. Again, as we come by this stuff. through the Buffalo Central Terminal, you know, you get a lot of the residual emotion that's still here today from the times where the soldiers would go away and never return, or the various times where families were separated and only part of the family could make it back to Buffalo. You also get the people that are in the rush because Buffalo was the hub between Chicago and New York City. So you get the rush of people that would go from New York City, hit Buffalo and be stuck here for some reason and not be able to make it to Chicago or vice versa, you know, from Chicago to Buffalo and can't continue to New York for whatever reason. At that time frame, you also had a lot of sickness and things like that that would happen while you're on the train. People would catch different diseases and things and be sick and never make it home from here either. Um, this building was also used, well, I can't say used as much as I can say taken advantage of for the elements of the city after the 
basic deterioration of the train station itself to where the homeless would come in here and use this as shelter and refuge. That turned into a lot of situations where you had uh, rob, robbings, murders, you know, people being beaten, things of that nature, as well as it's known that there have been a few homeless that have died because they've frozen to death within the walls of this building. You know, so you get a lot of the residual from all of that. You also get some of the spirits that are here when this was functioning. At one point there was a man named Anthony Fideli who had an apartment on one of the floors here in the building. It's believed, and I know I've witnessed him and a woman associated with him still haunting this location, as well as his dog. I don't recall the dog's name, but the dog was a very large dog, and he has been caught. I've felt him, I've seen him running up and down the halls on that main floor where the apartment was as well. So you, you got a lot of different emotions and feelings, happiness, sadness, death, all rolled into one big location, as well as the natural energy and the vibrations of the trains in and out constantly. And even though the location isn't used today as a train terminal, the train rail tracks are literally right outside of it. So you still get the building vibrating every time a train goes by, and that just stirs everything right back up. We had an amazing investigation here at the Central Terminal in Buffalo. We had a lot of hits and we had a lot of noises and we've actually seen some things, but mainly we had a lot of fun. We had some shadows that we saw at the end of hallways. We had a bunch of words come up that made sense and gave us some data to conclude that we did find a lot of spirits in this building. Are they from the original use? Are they from maybe 10 years ago, maybe five years ago? We're not really sure because there were so many of them, but I would definitely suggest coming in here and doing it again because we just got so much information. We need to do it again. So we investigated here last, last night and uh, we had a pretty crazy time. I and mean, we had some really good activity. Um, there was about 20 people on the ghost tour that we took. Uh, we started off on the third floor uh, and uh, we, were, we were investigating Mr. Fideli's uh, room that he had here. He was, he was a gentleman that owned the place at one time. And we started asking him about him and him, you know, who, if he's here with us and all that. We had some hits on the flashlight, but then we kind of opened up a little bit more and started talking. I said, we weren't getting too much activity, so I said, let's start just talking about other things, you know, about ourselves or about experiences people in the, in the, the audience or the group has had. And when we started doing that, we started getting more activity on the flashlight and the K2, and he kind of wanted to join in on the conversation. So we went that direction the rest of the night on the third floor, uh, the second floor, and at one point in another one of his rooms, we started playing uh, uh, music, Frank Sinatra music, which he was a big Frank Sinatra fan, and we had all kinds of activity on the ghost radar device we were using and the K2. But the, the highlight for the night for, for, I think, most everybody, we went down to the trolley room and uh, we were talking to something down there and the K2 was lighting up, the flashlight lit up, but then we had a disembodied voice, which this is really interesting. Again, there's like 20 some, tw about 20 people down there. Um, we're asking about, we thought it was a little kid, we're talking to him and we say, well, do you want to play Duck, Duck, Goose? Because we were all in a circle, right? And I started walking around the circle, and I got about halfway around it, and we hear this kid's voice, <sighs> whispery voice, but it was you could tell this was a little boy, loud and clear. Now, the interesting part is two-thirds of the group heard it, one-third did not. But I knew immediately that's a disembodied voice, very loud, very whispery, but it was a kid's voice, and there was no kids in the group. So it was very interesting. That, everybody, none of these people ever investigated before. None of them have really been on tours before. So that to them was like incredible, amazing. So we really had some great activity and that was a great way to end the night, uh, last night.
Okay, so it's that time now where we're going to turn over the investigation to our psychic slash mediums and see if they can sense anything, pick up anything in this really cool building. My initial feeling coming through the building, building is that there's definitely something here. I got a very sort of damp feeling, even though I, like, I've asked people if it's damp, they say no it's not, but with me it feels like there's dampness going right through my clothes. Um, I'm telling everybody that I think like I'm actually perspiring when I'm not perspiring, that's how wet I'm starting to feel. And uh, whenever I have uh, contact with spirits, they always come through my right side of my body, my right, my right arm, and the right flank. And I've been goose bumply all all day, and um, it just feels very, very damp. And to me, that that sense, like maybe again because we're we're still in Buffalo, the, we're, we're, they've got Lake Erie and the Niagara River. I still find that there's a lot of spirits in this area based on being close to the water as well. I think there's negative energy in the building based on what I'm picking up myself. Um, I think there's um, a few spirits here that have um, maybe not so much malevolent, but a sort of mysterious, um, sort of a, a, a fun attitude, maybe practical jokers or whatever, because I've noticed a few things happening for me. But not only that, um, some things I've said to some people seem to be very off when I normally wouldn't say that. And I think that's the original owner that was here. And I think that he definitely liked, um, or whoever this person was here, uh, that he liked a lot of women. And it's just a very weird sensation. That's all I can say about that. I do feel that someone from years back is here. Um, it's sort of like a cliche, the way I, I picture this person, but it's a very sort of fragile, small little fellow and he's older and he might have been someone that would be selling tickets kind of dressed like you know with a white shirt with stripes or something like that and maybe a suspender on but he had like a funny hat on his head but I feel like he's become more of um, an emotional caretaker for this building I think this person might have been a very lonely human being in his in his life and work was everything to him and he met a lot of people by being someone that was selling tickets and I think that definitely um, he's here and he's um, he's sort of watching out because it feels like there's there's been some very bad things happening here as well and he's trying to prevent it. But right now when I'm even talking about it and I, and I can sort of just see it in your mind's eye, he has been chased himself. He is afraid himself at times to be here because there are more evil spirits, souls here that actually frighten him because he's actually a good soul that's that's in this building. I do think that that people have been victimized. I did pick up um, um, that um, I feel like several women have been raped. Um, there's been a lot of violence in here. Um, it just feels like um, a knife, like a lot of um, um, slash marks on cheeks and things like that I, I've sensed here as well. Um, it's, it's, it's silly because where we had our little um, area where we did our talk in there, that's where I felt there was a lot of um, sadness actually and not so much beating up but um, emotional beating up and I learned since that that was the doorway where people actually said goodbye to their troops as they went to war. So whether or not that's where I'm feeling the beating up, you know, as a soldier, you are going to get beaten up by the weather, the environment, and by uh, an, another person.
incredible energy in here. I don't think anyone has to be psychic or a medium to feel it, to pick it up. You go in here, you can slice it with a knife. There is so much history over here, it's overwhelming. But for me, my first images that I saw uh, is all, every the activity related towards soldiers all over the place over here going. People very, very nervous where they're going to be deployed, what's going to be going on. Uh, I see a lot of young guys and very, very nervous, and I see loved ones around them very, very sad. But by the same token, it's all like coming together now. I see people waiting for loved ones to come back, because apparently they obviously also, they left here, probably coming back through here, and I see people waiting for loved ones, and in some cases of some people whose loved ones did not come back. And they're there, and in fact, there's one lady right sort of in the center there, walking around over there, waiting for her boyfriend to come back. I mean, she's in the spirit world now. He is gone. But sometimes when you pick up things in energies like this, it was very profound, very, very strong. So my first things that I'm picking up, which you asked me about, was soldiers, army, all kinds of people going by, but all of them with different types of feelings. Some trying to like joke and make believe how brave they are and they're scared. Will they come back? Won't they come back? And there's loved ones around them, bidding them, you know, all the best, knowing that they may not see that person again. So it's a strange feeling to me when I pick it up here. I'm picking up wonderful things and I'm picking up a lot of sad things. So I know there's a lot of activities, but I am sure that's just one part of what was happening here. But I only pick up what I'm picking up. It's something I would rather not pick up of some young ladies, uh, too specifically, I guess they ran away from home or anything like that. And you had some predators out there trying to solicit them. And it's very, very upsetting very, very, very sad, and they're just so roaming around, and so many people would love to redo what happened to them. Very sad uh, going on with that. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, perhaps one of the coolest, most effective ways to test for ghosts is by using a ghost box, also known as a Tesla box, or Portal 1. So who better to do this than Michelle DeRoche from Canada's Most Haunted, and of course, she's part of our investigation team, joined by Wayne Mallows, as they check out the terminal to see, are there ghosts? it's flying through this. Um, unfortunately, we're not getting anything on AM or FM band to even hear normal music or radio signal of any type. The reason for that, I think, is that we're, we're below ground right now. So we may not actually be able to just catch a signal because it is regular AM or FM. Well, Chris was telling us that we're actually at ground level, right? Oh. but we're buried under concrete. Tons of it. Okay, so we're buried under concrete, which essentially tells me that we're not going to play signal. So what we thought we would do is Brandon's going to be manning the omelets, Wayne's going to be checking for temperature changes or fluctuations, and I'd like to do an old-fashioned EVP session. EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomenon, and essentially we ask questions and we hope to catch a disembodied voice on our recorder that we can analyze in the laser data. Uh, my name is Glenn. I am going to ask you a question. Can you tell me in regards to the Van Dyne Cab Company? Is anyone still connected with that company here tonight?
Is Anthony Fideli here in this building at all today? Are any of the former owners here today? I know of a few people who were homeless, who found shelter here in this location, who may have passed away while they were here. Are anyone of you here with us right now? Was, was someone here, is, was someone hanged here? Is there someone down here that likes to scare people out of this area? Would anyone like some Jack or maybe a cigarette? It's possible. I'll tell you right now, I'm getting more so. Let me ask this question. Can someone tell me who is standing to my left side right now? That's the problem. Is there anyone here that Glenn has not made mention of that would like to have a word? Tedesco, but I believe he's still in the living. I know the boy that is here is known as Zachary. What about the girl? 
girl's name. I, I don't recall her name. Okay. Let's see. So, can we touch on the that shadow person that's always in the fucking room? Well, that, that was part of my questioning with is there someone out here that likes to scare me? Right. Because we know that there are reports of shadow people. Yes. And that, and of course, that means anything interesting. However, some of us researchers believe that shadow people. Right. So what are right. you saying? <laughs> well, time travel at the train station. Time travel at the train station. A little so, bottom leaf. Is this very few moment of this yeah, show down this yeah. Alright, so um Okay, so we're really gonna go for each other. Um and he's not one that's just the right Yeah, it just it's, it's 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 right here. It's right here. Okay. Look at the old thing. See, that's one of those two. Really? To me, that's, that's, that's one on the back here. Yeah. What could it be? What are these doors like? These were going to be shops. So, so they're all technically enclosed as well. No. Like a cool breeze, cool shops. There is a breeze. There is a cool breeze. I've got like 20, 22 here. It was colder here. It was like 13 between you two. Wow. 13. Celsius. It was 13. Yeah. Yeah. And we're at 22. 22 here. Yeah. It's very cool right here now. There's a cold breeze all around us. He's hanging out right here. Okay, you are making an effort to come and stand between us. Can you please tell us your name? Can you please tell us your name? Can you tell us why we're here?
So, there you have it, folks, from the Buffalo Central Terminal. Is it haunted? Oh, hell yeah. And it's a really cool place to come check out the historical landmark, the legacy of this building, and of course, the architecture. And love to thank everybody who participated in this episode, especially our guest investigator, Jack Kenna. See you next time.